there welcome to my channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review and happy day after fountain pen day who knew there was a fountain pen day perhaps we should call it fountain pen emancipation day as the world has been freed from the bonds of sharpie signature pens fountain pen users of the world what does that say I can't make it out what is it sir I can't make that out What did you get for Fountain Pen Day? Let me know in the comments below. You want to know what I got? I got this. Yes, a Myora Impronte Oversize Broad. And I got it with 20% off from Apple Bomb using the code. And if you can't make that out, it decodes as Fountain Pen Day 20%. So you can look forward to that review after the requisite four and a half weeks of boat time from Italy to Amsterdam. But to the fountain pen review of this day after fountain pen day doug's pen bbs amber is a cat collection i got this amber is a cat 456 vacuum filler just a few days ago and i was so excited i just had to herd all the other cats together into this murder of cats uh gaggle of cats loose association of cats oh, whatever these are some really cool cats the 456 is not the only cat in the bunch gaggle group clouder that's it it's not the only new cat in this clouder of cats the 355 is new as well i had it for about two months but i haven't inked it until now so with so many cats how do you choose your favorite cat well you could select using the standard cat selection cat criteria or choose the feline that hasn't crapped in your shower barfed on your footstool put a dead mouse in your bed or zoomed out of the closet to sink its teeth into your Achilles tendon for no apparent reason but I've created my own cat criteria to discover which one of these pens is the top cat the most effectual top cat whose intellectual close friends get to call him DC providing its wet dignity top cat Well, I'm totally stoked this morning. Not only did my Pen BBS 456 arrive in the mailbox, but I got a notification uh, from Biney uh, that the Galaxy 456 will be out next month. So for Christmas, I'm going to have an Amber 456, a Niangao 456, a Clear 456, and perhaps even a Galaxy to make my collection of 456s almost complete. Then we just need a Tootsie and we'd have the full range of what I consider the best Pen BBS model that they make. So let's open this up. And of course the amber comes in a nondescript gray box with no markings on it whatsoever. And we'll find a metal tin box with the pen bbs logo on it on the inside uh oh i see a dent let's look oh beautiful oh my god <laughs> he drops it no wow beautiful amber is a cat and our little pause we pause while we clean out this pen those of you who just tuned in the pinedale shopping mall has just been bombed with live turkey <laughs> film at 11. and we do a full review of this beautiful pen this goes to the top of the list without even writing with it so this is my third 456 pen bbs and this amber is a cat increases my pen bbs amber collection to six and that includes this 355 as well i received this amber is a cat 355 bulk filler and have not inked or reviewed this pen until now so i've reviewed both the 456 and the 355 models extensively so what i'd like to do today is do a bit of a competition of sorts 
So here is my Pen BBS Amber is a Cat collection. Oh, how'd you get in there? <laughs> Sorry. It's getting so you can't tell the speech from the alleys. Yeah, our alley is loose and it's individuality. So here is my Pen BBS Amber is a Cat collection. In order of acquisition from left to right, we have the 308, the 480, the 323 with little additions by myself, the 500, so that's a spring piston filler, the 355 bulk filler or called syringe filler, and the 456 vacuum filler that I just got the other day. I'll put the links for the reviews for all of these models in the description below. But for the purposes of this video, I'll discuss which of these six models is best. Best is an awful term, as is any attempt at creating lists. I hate those lists, top 10 this, top 10 that. So much of what is best is so purely subjective. But I'm going to attempt to figure out the pluses and minuses of each of these pens and come to some reasonable assessment of which of these I prefer most. In order to facilitate the assessment, I'm going to divide them first into two categories. The cartridge converter eyedroppers, that's these three pens here, and the piston style fillers, that's these three here, the spring piston, the bulk filler, and the vacuum filler. From here, let's create some sort of assessment criteria. First, the empirical data that can be measured, which is length, width, weight, ink capacity, postability, and then the subjective criteria, how it feels, the balance, how it feels posted versus unposted, comfort in the hand, the feel of the section, you know, and the overall look, those kind of things. Leveling the playing field somewhat, each of these pens has essentially the same nib. The standard Pen BBS fine nib with those laser etched cat paws. I understand now why the pharaohs worshipped these animals. Oh look Joe, he's making friends! When we get to the writing samples, I'm only going to be looking at the two new pens in the group this 456 and this 355. So let's take a quick look at each pen. First, the 308. I'm on record on many occasions claiming that the 308 model is the best bang for your buck fountain pen on the market today. This pen is well balanced, extremely comfortable in the hand posted or unposted. It holds a huge ink capacity if it's eyedroppered, and it's very attractive. My first Pen BBS 308 was this one in cedar, and it made me fall in love with the brand. Now I own 22, I think, 22, 23. I've lost count. And the 480. When I reviewed this newer model Pen BBS, I called it a redesign or refinement of the 308. The pen is sleeker, looks more like a Schaefer Balance uh, in its pointy shape, and it posts deeper and more securely than the 308. There's also some technical refinements from the 308 in that the cap clearance on this pen has been increased to allow for nib swapping. The 308 has a problem in that Yovo, Bach, and, and other number six size nibs are too long to use with the, with the 308 model. The 323. In my reviews of the 323, I've called this pen a writer's pen and a desk pen and also the most ergonomic pen I've ever written with. It is all those things. If you want to write for long periods, this is the pen you might reach for, as it seems to be molded to your hand and becomes an extension of your hand. It is just glorious in its feel. Of course, of all of these, this is the only one that doesn't have a clip, and so I added my own royal stop to my Amber is a Cat 323. 
I get a lot of questions about where I got that roll stop. It's just costume jewelry. I think it cost me maybe five bucks on eBay. Now for the piston style pens. The 355, 456, and 500. First, the 355. This is the improved version of the original 355, and the improvement is in the new bayonet piston capture device. I went into detail on this improvement in my review of the Misty Mountains 355. This improvement elevates this model to the top of the best pen BBS models, in my opinion. This type of pen is called a bulk filler, or sometimes a syringe filler, and works precisely like a syringe that draws up ink as you pull up the piston, and then you retract the piston back into the pen again. The 355 is very comfortable in the hand, unposted, holds an enormous amount of ink, actually the largest amount of ink of any of the three piston style fillers here, and only second in ink capacity to the eyedroppers. It has a shutoff valve that is useful to prevent burping because of air pressure or temperature changes. Of course, it has a bit of a challenge in posting. And the 456. The 456 has been around for about three years now, I think, and in my opinion, is the most successfully designed and engineered pen that Pen BBS makes. In fact, again, in my opinion, I think the Pen BBS 456 is the best bang for your buck vacuum filler fountain pen on the market. And spoiler alert, this may be the best Pen BBS fountain pen of my collection. And the 500. The 500 was a highly anticipated new model from Pen BBS. This is a spring syringe filler. And it's very easy to fill. In fact, it's not that much different than this Moonman T2 with its spring piston filler mechanism. The 500's piston rod retracts back in to the pen. I like how this mechanism works, but unfortunately it makes the entire pen bigger, longer, and heavier, and makes the pen unpostable. Yes, the cap goes on the end of the pen, but that's ridiculous. Zazzles. <laughs> Zazzles. I was going to name him Herman von Helmholtz, but he's so zazzy. <laughs> The pen is substantial in the hand, and the section is, as usual, with Pen BBS, very comfortable. Now let's look at some size comparisons, and then we'll look at the comparisons of the objective and subjective evaluations. So here is the 308, the 480, the 323, the 456, 355 and the 500 and here they are posted now let's look at the empirical data comparisons I made this Excel spreadsheet to compare the measurables on the six pens the three pens on the left are cartridge converter slash eyedropper pens and the three on the right are piston type fillers the bulk filler the vacuum filler and the spring piston filler I'm going to deal with the two groups separately as I really feel the group on the left are apples and the group on the right are oranges. All of the cartridge converters hold the same amount of ink, which is around 0.7 milliliters. So I only looked at the ink capacities of the three pens I droppered. You see that the 323 has a huge capacity of 3.8 milliliters, which is the largest capacity of all six pens here. The numbers show the differences between these pens as well. The 323 doesn't post, but it has the largest capacity. The 308 and the 323 are the least expensive of all six pens. Looking at the piston style group, the numbers that stand out are the huge capacity of the 355 at 3 milliliters, which is almost the capacity of a typical eyedropper, and the huge length of the 500 when it's posted. I don't actually consider the 500 a postable pen since it is ridiculously long even though the cap will stick to the end of the barrel. Although the empirical data about the pens might confirm some of your feelings about these different models, it is actually the subjective impressions that make or break your evaluation of how much or how little you appreciate these pens. So. 
let's do a chart of the touchy-feely aspects of the pens. Again, the Excel spreadsheet is our friend. I created this spreadsheet to illustrate my own personal opinion in these categories of touchy-feeliness. Feel and balance, either posted or unposted. The feel of the sections, including the threads. The ease of use for filling and maintenance the overall looks and beauty of the pen, and the overall value of the pen, which is not just the least expensive, but the cost of the pen related to how much I love the pen. Generally, people don't feel bad about spending money on something that makes you feel good about your purchase over and over again, regardless of whether it's tens of dollars or hundreds of dollars. I rated these categories with a four-point system of stars. Well, there are X's here. I've color-coded the ratings in gold by four stars, meaning excellent, silver for three and good, bronze for two and okay, and red for one and a poor rating. Let's look at each of these pens in the same groups of three. I've given all three pens a rating as eyedroppers, and eyedroppers require a bit more care in filling and maintenance with O-rings and silicone grease, etc. So I've given them all a two stars rating. It is fascinating to break down these assessments of your own observations as it can actually change your attitudes. My attitude about the 308, as I mentioned in the beginning, is that the 308 is the best bang for your buck fountain pen on the market. That might still be, but my own subjective opinion is illustrated here. And that is that the 480 is the better pen for the money. Even though the base finish is $4 more, it is slimmer, sleeker, more balanced, and posts much better. And so it actually surprised me and is the winner in this group of three. Now let's look at the piston style pen. This chart reaffirmed my feeling that the 456 is the best pen of this group of three. And in fact, the best pen of these six pens. And I'll actually extend that to say that the 456 is the best pen model that PenBBS makes, again, in my opinion. You can see my feelings here about the 456. I could find no category in which I could ding the 456. It is uniformly excellent in all the categories and is the only one of these six pens that has perfect marks in this very subjective and my opinion only analysis. There is a huge your mileage may vary component to all of this. Your mileage may vary. But at least you can see my thinking here. In fact, I can see my thinking and why I love this pen so much. Add to this the fact that this is an amber as a cat and one of my favorite finishes on any fountain pen. And you pretty much see why this pen is now very, very high on my list of favorite pens in my collection. Now let's do a writing sample with the two brand new pens in this group, the 456 and the 355. Everybody wants to be a cat. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Amber is a Cat 456 and the Amber is a Cat 355. Pen BBS 456 Amber. And it is a fine steel nib. And the ink in both of these pens is Diamine Ancient Copper. This is the swatch for the Ancient Copper along with Robert Oster Astrakiza Rot and Monteverdi Canyon Rust. Let's check the wetness on the 456. As you can see, this is very wet. Now, let me pause here to talk about both of these nibs out of the box. Both nibs were typical Pen BBS fine nibs in that they were smooth but dry. The 456 was inked first even though I got it second. Instead of flossing the nib with a steel gapping tool as I have very often done with Pen BBS nibs when they are when they are dry, I decided to try an even easier method. 
Here is the writing sample I did when I first inked up the pen. You can see this was the start. This is how the pen wrote. This is how wet it was. So all of this writing is before I did anything to the nib. And then I decided it was too dry. So I very carefully flex the nib in straight downward strokes. I did this by pressing very lightly on the nib, very carefully. This is the actual result when I did that seven times on this page right here. And that's the wetness I got out of it immediately. And then I wrote this line. So you can see the difference in the dryness, wetness of these lines from there to there. I must emphasize that this is not a flex nib. In fact, these nibs are typically very, very stiff. I put pressure on it, but I didn't overdo it. In my mind, it's better to put a little pressure on the nib a number of times rather than pushing it and possibly springing the nib. As you can see, it worked beautifully. The writing experience was instantly where I expected this kind of nib to be and where I love it. The extra wetness makes the nib that much smoother and the line a little bit thicker. Let's move on to the 355. This is how the nib on the 355 behaved out of the box. Same as the 456, dry. I did the same thing. I pushed it seven times. It was so wet it smeared on the next page. But this is the original writing that I got out of it. The original wetness right there. And after pushing it seven times, this is the wetness I got. And that's the writing I got out of it as well. So let's try the 355. Again, very wet. There, on the 355, there was a slight scratch on the up to the right stroke. So I checked the tines with my loop and it was slightly out of alignment and I pushed it with my thumbnail just a bit and now it's fine. Very smooth and very wet. My Richard Bender chart shows both of these nibs. In fact, all of my Pen BBS fine mini food A nibs are 0.5 millimeters in thickness and that is a western fine and a Japanese almost medium and because it's that mini food a nib it gives your line a little bit of character not through flexing because there's no flex here at all when you push it very stiff and our writing samples and reverse writing and some quick writing and reverse and quick Yeah, both these pens work in reverse and the feeds keep up very nicely indeed. So what do I like and what do I not like about these fountain pens? Well, I think that has been the point of this whole video, actually. I love all these cats, but I prefer the 456 over all of them for reasons I already articulated. This pen right here has shot to the top of my best pens of 2020 and I've only had it a week. A lot of that comes from the fact that I loved the 456 since my first clear version about a year and a half ago. And the rest comes from the fact that I just melt when I see this amber acrylic. 
It is just stunning. This cat might get knocked off the fence post when the Galaxy version arrives, but we'll just have to wait for that head-to-head -head video to see. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she scratched. I made this.